So, very, very good. Ah, Anak also says Pac-Man. Well, that's uh, obviously a favorite today. Okay, very good. So, uh, Olga says Pac-Man as well, but she doesn't play video games. Okay, fair enough. Well, we'll be talking about many different games today. Uh, thank you for coming. Um, two things before we start. First, um, I will be, uh, well, in fact, now I'm recording this session. So afterwards, I will also uh, send you uh, a link so you can watch this again if you want. Um, and also, uh, remember, please, anytime you want to um, put your comments in the chat box, please go ahead. Please, uh, as I said, when you send messages <clears throat> in the chat box, please use the option send to panelists and participants so everyone can see your messages. Okay, so um, we're going to start today. Uh, first, gaming grows up. Big question then, why am I talking about this? Why did I decide from all the possible topics? Why am I talking about video games? Well, I grew up with video games. Um, I'll be talking a little about uh, some of the history of video games today. And uh, I was there during this time, very interesting time for video games. Um, and uh, I think, well, video games are very important for my life. I think video games uh, are a very interesting part of modern culture. But also thinking about the economy, for example, thinking about um, making money, Video games are also very important uh, and interesting in a lot of different ways, which we're going to look at today. So first though, let's start with a little test. A little, are you ready for a quiz? So how much do you know about video games? Please have a look at this information. We have a list of video games and a list of characters. Can you match the games to the characters? So please have a look. You can put your answers in the chat box. Okay, we have a few uh, good ideas there. Very good. Uh, Marcella, very, very difficult for you, perhaps. Okay, no problem. We'll talk about this. You have a little more time. Okay, so we have some uh, excellent uh, ideas here. Very good. So let's let's check. Uh, first of all, we have Ditto. So as, as some of you said, yep, here we have uh, Ditto. The easiest Pokemon to draw, definitely. So Ditto, who changes his shape, can look like any other Pokemon. Very good. Uh, Master Chief, then, we have this very famous helmet from Halo. That's right. So uh, next then, Link, of course, the main character, the protagonist of Legend of Zelda, of course. Some people, of course, think that Link is actually called Zelda, but no, of course, he is Link, and the princess is Zelda. Next then, 
one of my favorites, definitely. Uh, Ezio Auditore de Firenze from Assassin's Creed. I think uh, the best assassin from the games. One, a very interesting character. Uh, definitely very iconic character as well. Uh, we have Lara Croft from Tomb Raider, followed by Nathan Drake from Uncharted. Yeah, very, very good character. Very interesting in a lot of ways. Um, Jill Valentine, I don't think anyone got. Uh, Jill Valentine, one of the uh, most important characters from Resident Evil. Uh, she likes to, sh to shoot zombies. And uh, finally, Kratos. We have from God of War. So very, very interesting character there. Uh, very interesting variety of characters uh, in this list. And of course, many different types of games, which we'll be looking at today. So how did you do there? Did you get some correct, most of them? Well, don't worry, because we're going to be talking about a lot of different aspects of video games today. So, um, one of the main things today is look a little at the, uh, the history of video games. So, first of all, thinking about video game history and development. Interesting question for you. Please answer in the chat box. In what year was the first video game created? What do you think? In what year was the first video game created? Okay, very interesting uh, variety of, of answers here. For, so 1985, 1987, 1976, 1970. Uh, Erica says Pong, possibly. Well, uh, a little before Pong, actually. Um, so, Karen, you said 1947. Uh, Anna, you said 1958. So, you're, you're actually quite close. The first video game, or what is usually uh, recognized as the first video game, was created in 1952, and it was called OXO, or OXO. So this was a game um, of noughts and crosses, and it was quite basic in a lot of ways. So uh, definitely not an Xbox game, but uh, many people say the first video game really ever created. This was actually created at the University of Cambridge, um, as part of a uh, research project um, and very interesting, of course, to see how these things have, have developed over time. Um, as uh, Erica said, yes, very important then, really one of the first commercial video games, of course, this first game, uh, OXO, was only playable if you actually went to Cambridge University, which not many people could do. But the first commercial game really was Pong. So yes, Pong, very, very uh, basic game in a lot of ways, but incredibly popular. So in the 1970s, uh, these cabinets started to appear in, in bars and restaurants and different places. Um, and of course, it was an incredible new experience for people. People were very happy to uh, try out this new way of um, playing games, this new way of enjoying um, with their friends. So here, um, yeah, 1972, uh, Pong was a very, very big success. Of course, when we talk about big successes, um, here then we also need to think about the original home system, which 
was the Atari 2600. So this was, again, quite a basic system, but had a lot of different games available and was the first time people could play these different games at home. So very, very popular. Uh, many homes had an Atari 2600 in the late uh, 70s or 80s. Very popular. If you, can, if you look very closely there, you can see that it's a uh, Pac-Man cartridge um, in the system. Of course, talking about this period, the most successful game, we had Space Invaders from 1978. So here, again, this cabinet, which was uh, installed in many different places, very, very popular game. This was made by the Japanese company Taito, um, and it made in uh, modern money over 13 billion. US dollars, very, very successful game, very important uh, in the history and the development of video games. So we're going to continue now looking at uh, different periods of uh, video game history, first of all. So 1982 uh, was quite important because we started to see the rise of home computing. We have a couple of uh, different systems here. So the, uh, the ZX Spectrum here, for example, or the, uh, the Dragon 32. So the Dragon 32 had 32 kilobytes of memory, not megabytes, not gigabytes, kilobytes of memory. And well, if you look at the screen, um, this kind of, it was able to play this kind of chess game Obviously, nothing too complicated. Um, I actually had a Dragon 32 many years ago, uh, and you know, it was a good system at the time. Um, it was actually um, created in Wales, and for that reason, they had their symbol was the, the dragon. Um, also very important at this time was the ZX Spectrum. So this had 48 kilobytes of memory, um, but very, very popular home system. And um, the amazing thing here, the great thing with these systems was that it let people play games like the Atari 2600, but also people started to, to program. People started to write their own games and to try to uh, create their own different video games. So we had these um, home systems getting more and more popular, but we started uh, to see a big problem, which was in 1983, particularly the video game crash. Now, as I said, video games were becoming more and more popular in the late 70s and early 80s. But if you look at the image here, there were many different games systems. There were many different companies making different products and different games. And really, there were too many things happening. So the market was, could not uh, cope with all this supply. There was not enough demand and really everything crashed. So here, 1983, big, big problem. And particularly this, um, a lot of people say that this crash was because of specifically one specific game or one specific game uh, was the example of things going very wrong for video games. This game was made from a famous film. Can anyone guess which game am I talking about? Which video game in 1983 caused... Wow, Douglas, you know your history. Excellent. 
So yes, here we have what many people say was the worst video game ever made. Um, of, um, so basically the game came out um, for Christmas. They had to make, the film um, was released and they had to make the game in time to sell it for Christmas. And there was really only a very short time. So as a result, the game was not very good. Uh, if you look at the, uh, the graphics there, but much worse than the graphics, um, this was the actual gameplay. Um, there were, for example, many uh, parts of the game where you could fall in a hole and it was impossible to escape. So basically you had to turn the system off. And um, so this, uh, if you look at the game uh, design here, uh, this was for the Atari 2600. Um, and this game was a terrible failure. In fact, um, for many years, people talked about, um, there, was, there were thousands of these games, but there was no evidence but only a few years ago, in, uh, I think it was uh, New Mexico, they found thousands and thousands of these games um, that were thrown away because no one bought them because it was terrible. So here, 1983, uh, E.T. was a classic example of a game that caused a lot of problems, a game that was... Um, in many ways uh, emblematic of this video game crash. Of course, after the crash, many companies thought about what they could do and they started to recover and to grow again. Now they learnt from a lot of the mistakes and at this time we can see a lot of the uh, classic systems starting to appear. So here, of course, the, uh, the Super Nintendo, the Mega Drive, um, these were obviously along with the original uh, systems, the NES and the Master System, um, very, very successful at the time. We could see um, this conflict between different systems starting to appear. At the same time, of course, we started to see a lot of classic games, a lot of very familiar characters starting to uh, appear around this time. So there was much more focus uh, during this time on, on quality, much more focus on trying to really develop interesting games that people wanted to play because people saw as with the example of et that if you make a game that's not very interesting for people no one will buy it and you'll lose a lot of money and you'll have a lot of problems of course also at this time um we had the nintendo for example uh, we have the Nintendo and Sega home systems being very popular, but we also saw uh, the rise of handheld gaming. So the Game Boy, the classic Game Boy at this time, gave people for the first time really the chance to take uh, their games on the move, play them in any place. I mean, before this, we had kind of smaller systems that just had uh, one single game. Uh, installed, such as the, um, the original uh, Mario Brothers, for example. Um, but uh, the original Game Boy, of course, had many, many great games, very, very uh, popular system, and uh, it became a real classic at this time. Um, at the same time, of course, as I was saying, there was a lot of focus on uh, quality. Um, so many games companies 
had third parties developing games for them. So Nintendo created their own games, but they also had third parties creating games. So let's see if you, if you know any of these. In the case, for example, of um, Nintendo. So Capcom were creating uh, many games for uh, Nintendo, again, with very careful regulations about uh, quality. Can anyone tell me what was maybe the best, the most well-known game by Capcom for Nintendo. I'll give you a clue. This was, the first game was in 1987. All these games were eventually made into different series. I think Resident Evil was a little later. This was uh, 19, so this was 1987. Any ideas? way it was a, a platform game which game very good Douglas yes so here uh, this was the start of the very very successful uh, Mega Man uh, series so here uh, Capcom developed this idea of uh, Mega Man, which went on to have Mega Man 2, 3, 4, 5, Mega Man X, uh, many different games, very uh, popular, successful character. Uh, another example here, Konami. What was Konami's most uh, successful third-party game for Nintendo? Starting in 1986, again, a game which is part of a series. Uh, well, Miguel Angel, you're close. You do, you definitely hunt monsters in this game. It's a game which uh, one of you mentioned at the beginning of the webinar. So, 1986, uh, Konami produced for Nintendo the first of the Castlevania games, because, uh, again, very, very popular um, series of games, um, which, of course, now, again, very popular at the moment um, with the animated series on, on Netflix, for example. Uh, so this is a new version of the Castlevania uh, story. And finally, we have Squaresoft, or, or just Square. So they created one of the most important uh, JRPGs, or Japanese role-playing games, in 1987. Any ideas which was this game? Excellent, Douglas. You've got it. So, yeah, Final Fantasy uh, here, 1987. Um, very, very popular series of games. So, as I say, none, none of these games were created by uh, Nintendo. They were all created by third parties, but with a high level of quality and all very, very successful and profitable games. So... And um, on then to the uh, 1990s, so the 1990s, we could see that video games were becoming very, very popular and culturally important because they started to not only uh, appear as video games, but we saw more and more uh, different video game movies. So we started to see different things like the Mario Brothers movie. If anyone has seen the Mario Brothers movie, uh, terrible, 
terrible film, um, terrible special effects. Um, but, um, of course, people and the film studios, Hollywood, wanted to make money from this. Um, so this was one of the first big games. This was 1993, followed in 1994 by another terrible film. Um, so the original Street Fighter film with Jean-Claude Van Damme. Um, again, not a great film. And followed then uh, by quite a similar concept. Uh, 1995 here, we have the Mortal Kombat film. Just looking there at the picture, you can see uh, not, not a very high quality film, not very successful. So a very important thing here, of course, is that these films, these original video game films were not good films. Um, they were not very successful, but they represent Hollywood trying to make more money from um, this new industry of video games. They could see that video games were popular. And so they started to uh, try to get more money in this way. Particularly important, of course, um, it's no accident that, of course, Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, uh, were quite violent games in a lot of ways. And around this time, we could see the creation of the video game rating council. So this was created by Sega um, because there was a lot of controversy about violent video games. Many people said uh, video games are too violent. Children are learning uh, to be violent from video games. Um, and of course, this is a, a terrible thing. So often we can, we can see on modern video games, um, but uh, originally these were only for Sega games and now of course for all video games with these types of uh, classifications to try to uh, restrict more violent or sexual video games, for example, uh, from younger people. So, if we look then around um, 2005 and onwards, we can see what many people call the, the modern age of gaming. So around this time, a lot of really important game systems. The PS3, of course, really, really uh, popular and um, very important, of course, that it had its uh, Blu-ray disc compatibility at that time. Of course, the Xbox 360 and the Nintendo Wii. Now, question, from these three systems, PS3, Xbox 360, and the Wii, which one was the most popular? Which one was the most successful? Put your answer, please, in the chat box. Okay, so we have uh, an interesting variety of answers. Some people say Xbox, Xbox 360. Some people say PlayStation. Some people say we. Okay, so let's check. The Xbox uh, until 2007 was selling more. Um, but after two, 2008, actually, the Wii became the most uh, successful, the most popular of these systems. Now, possibly you might be surprised by this because the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3 were more advanced in many ways. The specifications were better. But 
The reason, or one of the big reasons why the Wii was very popular is because it found a new public for video games. Now, a really interesting thing is that traditionally video games or people thought video games, oh, they're just for teenagers. They're just for little, little kids. But many people found that the, uh, the Wii, for example, was a, a nice idea, a different way for uh, older people, for senior citizens to uh, have fun together, to enjoy different exercises. Of course, there were um, some specific things like the, the Wii Fit, um, which were installed in many nursing homes uh, and therapy centers for people to, to play um, as they were getting better. So this was a, a really interesting thing that actually the Wii from uh, opening this new public uh, actually became uh, really, really popular. Of course, we could also see at this time the rise of PC gaming. So uh, platforms like Steam started to become uh, very popular for people to, to play games on their home computers without having a, a console. And we started to see as well the, the rise of the gaming PC. So a, a PC system that was specifically created or, or built to play games and to be very, very fast, very powerful machine. So uh, as I said, from this period, we can see the, the rise, the age, uh, the modern age of gaming with these uh, quite sophisticated machines. We can also see, of course, around this time, a big growth in mobile and casual gaming. So uh, we can see many different uh, games that people were able to play as, of course, our mobile phones became more sophisticated. While it was possible to play games just with this uh, little device you have in your pocket. So we saw a lot of very popular games around this time. Did you play Angry Birds? I definitely played Angry Birds. No, uh, let's see, there you are, Karen. Okay, well, if, if you never played Angry Birds, you should try it, it's quite good. This was actually uh, created by a, a Swedish company and one of, was one of the first really, really uh, successful um, handheld uh, games, particularly for mobiles and also tablets. Um, so um, they had you know, a number of different uh, games, including uh, Angry Birds Star Wars, um, and uh, no, very, very popular, of course. And um, of course, we can see uh, other games as well. Did anyone play this game? Does anyone recognize this one? Uh, Miguel Angel, you know this one then. Yeah, I know, I, I personally, I spent many, many minutes possibly hours playing temple temple run uh so uh, uh this is uh, uh temple run uh, again a uh, very basic idea just keep running move left move right jump duck uh but very very uh, fast game very frenetic um, and a lot of fun so uh very very popular game um during the particularly well the, the earlier days of mobile gaming and um, then of course we can see uh for example the rise of gps games um so games here uh, like pokemon go that have been very very popular um in the last few years so uh, pokemon go if you don't know was created by uh, niantic which was originally part of Google. Um, so the original um, 
one of the original games that Niantic created used all the map data from Google Maps to create a GPS-based game. And all this information was used then a little later to create uh, Pokemon Go, uh, which has been a very popular and actually a very, very profitable game. Uh, people spend a lot of money to buy special items in the game, and uh, Niantic have made a lot of money, of course, at the moment that people cannot walk around. It's been a little difficult for them, but uh, of course, uh, they are trying to find solutions to this. So it's, again, very interesting, actually, to see how a game that uh, really requires movement uh, adapts to a situation when people cannot move. So here then we have different ideas thinking about mobile and casual gaming. We're going to uh, continue now. One last thing to think about in terms of history and development, of course, which now that uh, we have much more access to the internet is online and multiplayer gaming. So we can see things like League of Legends, of course, uh, the famous LOL, uh, has become very, very popular in recent years, um, which enables people to play online with a, a massive community of other players. Um, Fortnite, of course, uh, whether you like it or not, uh, has also been very, very successful, uh, particularly in terms of, you know, making a lot of money and getting people to play together. And we can see, of course, this rise and growth of esports. So very uh, important these days. Uh, we can see a lot of things um, through streaming channels, for example, or um, different online services to participate in these things or to uh, watch these events. Just to give you an idea, um, in 2018, esports had an audience of around 380 million people, and it made uh, 906 million US dollars. So very, very good business that's really only in its uh, initial days. Of course, a big question will be, can esports really challenge traditional sports? Can esports perhaps take the place of, um, of football or um, American football or any of these other big sports that usually get all the money? But definitely we can see that it's a growing area and uh, very, very popular in a lot of ways. So just to finish off this part about the history and development of video games, you can see going then from 1952, going from OXO and our uh, noughts and crosses or, or tic-tac-toe game up to when video games started to become um, accessible to people, started to become popular to many different people in the, in the 80s. And then, of course, nowadays, we can see a massive change. We can see a huge uh, progression in terms of uh, graphics, in terms of what we can do with these things, uh, thinking about what people expect when we talk about about video games okay so we're going to uh, continue now move on from the world of uh, video game history and look a little at uh, video game genres so little question for you before we start please write in the chat box what's your favorite type of video game what video games do you like to play? What's your favorite type of video game?
Okay, so some very interesting ideas. Very good. So uh, first-person shooters, open world games, soccer games, role-playing games, sports games, football games, mm -hmm. educational games. Mm -hmm. Very good. Action games. Good. Okay. Bomberman. Wow. Interesting game, definitely. Uh -huh. Uncharted. So, um, good, good, good. Well, we're going to look uh, a little now at some different genres. So, please, when we're playing, um, tell us in the chat box, what type of games do you like um, thinking about um, these different video game genres? Let's have a look at some examples. So, puzzle games, of course, the main thing about a puzzle game is it's something you, you have to think about, something where you have to use your brain to solve some of these puzzles. So we can see a few uh, different examples here. So, of course, uh, the classic uh, Tetris, of course, was uh, definitely uh, had its origins in um, puzzle and um, had some elements of... Uh, action perhaps as well particularly uh, when you get later in the game but uh, definitely something that you had to think about to, to, to get the game uh, to win the game we can also think here about some of the uh, early adventure games i don't know if anyone recognizes this one this is a, a wonderful uh, wonderful game uh, which was uh, monkey island uh, again, a type of uh, kind of puzzle adventure game where, as you can see here, you had uh, to, had to collect many different items and use them in the correct place, in the correct way to win the game. Uh, does anyone recognize this game? This is uh, definitely one of my favorites uh, and a very interesting uh, type of uh, puzzle game where you have to think a lot to uh progress in the game very good erica yes so uh this is portal um very very uh, interesting game if you have the chance to play it and of course not my favorite exactly but very popular in the last few years things like uh, candy crush have been very very popular puzzle games and again have made a lot of money so, strategy games are connected in many ways to puzzle games. Again, things that you need to think about and uh, do in the correct way to win the game. So, one of the earliest uh, was the, the first Civilization. Uh, very good uh, strategy game. And then we have on a much bigger scale um, games uh, here uh, where it's not just the world you have to conquer but the whole universe so here um strategy games often involve this type of uh dynamic where you need to uh grow your empire and become stronger and stronger sports then so uh, many of you were saying you enjoy sports what's your favorite sports game Ricardo says FIFA. Okay, no, no problem. Very, I'm sure a very popular choice. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, uh, obviously very, very popular game. Um, very successful uh, in many parts of the world. Of course, not so much uh, in the United States, uh, where American football is more popular. Um but then here, uh, yeah, golf games, of course, have always been uh, very, very popular in terms of uh, sports. Uh, as I said, it really depends on the particular country because in the United States, uh, perhaps, you know, what we think of football uh, for them is, is soccer. Yeah, that's, that's right. This is uh, John Madden's uh, American football here. Um, 
very popular in the United States. Of course, a lot of these games really, it really depends on the particular country. Uh, here, for example, cricket games, very popular in the United Kingdom or, well, India perhaps as well. Um, not very popular in other countries. Or we have particular other games as well that uh, possibly outside of Colombia, not very well known. So let's continue. Uh, racing games in a way are connected to sports games. So uh, we can think about some of the classic games here. So we have games like Outrun, very, very popular um, arcade games. Well, of course, uh, of course, Erica, uh, I can't talk about racing games without talking about Mario Kart. So this is a specific type of uh, racing game called the battle racing game, where, of course, you, uh, you have to fight against uh, different, uh, different uh, opponents. And yes, um, as some of you uh, are saying, um, some racing games can be uh, exactly really kind of the opposite of Mario Kart. Um, we can have, for example, Formula One games that are very, very uh, realistic, really try to give you a, a very uh, real experience of driving in Formula One. Um, another very big and important uh, series, uh, RPGs. So here, uh, original role-playing games really came from a uh, fantasy world setting so um, the idea of fantasy uh, of uh, monsters and elves magic these things are often very important still for role-playing games um, but of course we can see uh, many different varieties such as the jrpg or the japanese role-playing game which can often combine uh, many different factors of course just to mention as well, you can see I'm, I'm quite a fan of Pokemon personally. Uh, Pokemon is a very specific type of uh, JRPG, um, which uh, has, of course, been very, very popular. And um, as a kind of brother or, or sister to the uh, role-playing game, we can see the uh, massive uh, multiplayer online games, which a kind of an extension, but of course, uh, quite action-based as well. And uh, the multiplayer uh, factor here is very, very important. Platformers, of course, very uh, big, particularly, of course, um, in the early days of video games. Um, as we'll see, there are some uh, that are quite important these days, uh, but some of the biggest original games. Yeah, Crash Bandicoot, Genesis is saying, that's, that's true. Um, Mario and Sonic, of course, yeah, yeah. Yoshi's Island, that's right, definitely. Um, but we can still see, uh, particularly in a lot of indie games, um, a lot of different games um, that are still definitely in the platform genre. So here, for example, we have uh, Hollow Knight or another great example of this with a very, uh, with a, a really, really unique uh, cartoon aesthetic is Cuphead. So here, beautifully designed game, incredibly difficult, uh, but definitely um, in the genre of, of platform games. Uh, this game, in case you don't know it, only came out, uh, I think, two years ago now, three years ago. Uh, but, of course, uses this kind of 1920s uh, cartoon design. Simulations, uh, also really important. So simulations um, can mean many different things. We can see the original SimCity, where basically you just had to create a city and build all the different uh, resources, all the different uh, parts of the city, the roads, the trains that you wanted. And this, of course, developed into things like The Sims. So um, very popular games, very interesting, of course, uh, in this kind of uh, open world where you could 
create and uh, really develop the game in your own way. Um, yep, Farmville, that's right. Um, we can also see quite uh, more, more serious games, of course, like the flight simulators, which similar to the Formula One uh, games we saw earlier, we're really designed to give people you know, the real experience. So if you want to learn to fly a plane, you can play this simulator and, and try it out. Action, of course, very big and important genre. So many different uh, types of games here. So as you expect from action, there's a lot of action. So a lot of jumping around, attacking people, fighting, all these different things. Of course, uh, as some of you mentioned earlier, the idea of uh, sandbox games or open world games, uh, really important. So, uh, yeah, uh, Grand Theft Auto, for example, where you could go and explore the whole city, go really anywhere you want, play the game in your own way. Um, and uh, going back, of course, as some of you mentioned as well, the FPS, first person shooters. So uh, the original Doom was a, a very fun first person shooter to go and uh, kill a lot of monsters. Of course, this has uh, developed a lot, a lot nowadays to much more realistic um, battle uh, and war situations, for example. So, um, we're going to finish in a few minutes. I'd like to just uh, uh, finally, though, give you a few little ideas, um, which I think actually are quite important questions for the, the gaming industry today. So, very interesting things to think about in terms of video games, the world, and business. So, first of all, how inclusive are video games? As I said, there was a, an idea originally that video games were very focused for teenagers, particularly teenage boys. But as we saw, for example, the, the Wii um, gave older people the opportunity to play video games. They started to, to break the stereotype. Um, we can also see, um, well here, for example, you can see this uh, from these statistics. Um, there are more and more older people, of course, especially uh, as people like myself, I'm not a senior citizen yet, but as I grow older, if I continue gaming, then I will be in this statistic. Also, uh, really important things like the uh, Women Game Jam. So this is uh, an opportunity for uh, women to become involved in video games, not only playing video games, but of course, designing video games, programming video games. So these type of events, this is one uh, that happens um, quite regularly in Colombia, if you want to look at this information. Really interesting organization, but again, trying to make video games more inclusive. And um, as I mentioned uh, a little earlier, indie games, really important. So uh, things like uh, Hollow Knight, things like Cuphead, as you can see from some of the games here, uh, these were not created by big traditional game studios. These were created by independent companies. So it's very important to think, can indie games really challenge the big games company? Can they uh, make big games companies obsolete even? Also, on a similar note, will people continue to buy games consoles? If you can play a lot of games on your own, if you can play games free, for example, and is it necessary to buy a console? Uh, a difficult thing for users um, of big games consoles to think about they their products attractive. And can games be regarded as important as literature? Games are still quite a new form of culture. If we're looking at Pong, for example, 
it's quite difficult to say that this is uh, as good as uh, Shakespeare, for example, or as good an important uh, film. But look at like us. Can we say that this is as important as an art form as work a work of literature a work of cinema so to think about hey so we've uh, now i'd like to the opportunity do you have any final uh questions any comments anything about what we were talking about We're always trying to create um, that are interesting, and as I say, personally, uh, I think uh, uh, video games are definitely important. Uh, Douglas, so talking about uh, game station, do I play PlayStation or? I have to be honest here, yeah, and Nin focused um, really, um, I haven't played really enough PlayStation or Xbox to really have an opinion I've enjoyed the play but uh, I don't really have an opinion Hello, sorry, I think there's a problem with Zoom, but uh, finally, that's it. So, um, thank you everyone for uh, watching today. I hope it's been an interesting experience. A um, couple of uh, little things here, a um, couple of questions. So, uh, Miguel Angel, you're asking, do I prefer vintage to say, I, I, certainly. Um, I think actually uh, modern games definitely um, in the past I think I prefer older games but uh, there's definitely a lot of really beautiful things about vintage games but some amazing things that uh, we can see with, with modern games so I'm always saying what's going to happen next in the industry um, I can't let's see See your name here. Uh, Ricardo asks for opinion on micro uh, transactions in video games. Um, so, uh, to be honest, um, I think it's kind of similar in a way to uh, to the DRT question. I think um, personally, I, I I would like to get everything at the same time if I the game i don't pay a lot uh, extra but um i mean i think for some people expect that now and uh, effort of the the culture part of the general scenario 
of dealings in the 21st century. Okay, so uh, we'll finish there today. So uh, thank you everyone for participating. Thank you for being with this today. Um, a very interesting comment there from... <laughs> Good. Uh, thank you, Douglas. Yeah, GG. Very good. Um, and please, uh, I'll have some information, by the way, add this to your email. So please uh, watch and you can webinar again if you want. Please, we're going to have another webinar next week, uh, this time about music, uh, music different, uh, uh, in different decades. Uh, so join us next week for a Thing that's all about the world of music. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, have an excellent evening. Thank you very much. See you virtually in the future. Bye for now.